So tell us, yeah. what's it feel like to finally be in the suit? It's hot. Uh, we, we shot, the only things I've shot in the suit so far have been in the summer. And I was hot all the time. And it's not even cold yet in New York yet. So, uh, but it's been so much fun. I, uh, the first time I wore it, I remember walking out on set. And everyone was looking at me and they were going, wow, yeah. pretty cool. And I was like, yeah, it is pretty cool. And I, you know, I just felt like... It felt, it felt great. It felt very empowering. Um, and I, I'm, I'm really excited that, that we were um, able to get to this point and to take it here. Now the producer teased that there's going to be something that happens in the version already. After, they've already been through quite a bit. Can you talk a little bit about, not necessarily that situation, but what it's going to do? It's like, like in any relationship. I have a son perhaps the same age as, as David. And it's, it's a very tenuous time in a young man's life, um, especially someone who's damaged and is intelligent in his character, as Master Bruce is. So there comes, they, 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 there's a huge stumbling, there's a huge pothole, and they, they come to loggerheads. But you know, what makes relationships stronger is you need to dissemble and fall apart in order to get back together again and be stronger. But it's a, it's a really not, a, it's a very dark and um, sad chapter coming up, which I'm really looking forward to. I had a lot of fun shooting it. That's what I'll say. <laughs> it's my piece. That's great, well done. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> so, uh, that man's kind of like famous for his gadgetry and things like that. Now that you've got the suit, what is something that you're, you really want to see happen? Maybe it's not as possible, but you know. There's so many things that's going to happen that I'm not excited to see. I know it's going to happen. Um, that you guys should be excited to see. Um, we got we got proto grappling hooks. We got proto batarangs coming. We got. Let me fight you. Do do tell that <laughs> So much is like coming. It's gonna blow your mind. It's gonna be ridiculous. I'm ex I'm so excited. Every time we get on set and Bruce is using like some other things, I I will. You know what I want to see? I'll answer that question. You know what I want to see? Uh, a proto utility belt. Like with, with like with like uh, you know like uh, the yeah, smoke bombs, yeah. and flash bombs, yeah. like huh? like they, like like Bruce, I just want to see Bruce like wear a belt and then like pull things out that like obviously like not all those things can be in one belt. Yeah. Okay, yeah, but, yeah. but that's what happens in the comics. Right? Yeah, so, so, so. <laughs> you're right. It's like yeah, uh, there's like, only six pockets. Yeah, he's like six pockets. <laughs> like, like pulling out people out of the belt. Like I want to see that happen. I feel like that would be so dope. <laughs> You know, it seems like he's gotten more on the team because he's obviously making prototypes and doing that and coming more into his role that we, we know from the movies and the comics. Can you talk a little bit about um, what he's doing this season and kind of pulling away from Pete? Is he still working with the GCPD or is he working now? In this first half of the season, he's still working with GCPD and as the masked Vigiletti evolves, so does Lucius's life with him. You know, as he needs things to protect himself, we see... Lucius give him those things and create those things and keep him safe because that's what Lucius' whole job is and that's what he's committed to doing is making sure Bruce Wayne stays alive. Is, quick follow up, is he going to be involved at all in the break between Alfred and Bruce Wayne? Is he going to take a... It's a great question. It's a great question. Very good question. It's a great question. It's a great question, guys. It's a great question. What's one of the few characters in the show who seems to be almost representative of the audience? Yes, agreed. Like, very sort of logical and trying to parse out this fantastic world that other people have been sort of like, right, sure. Um, he's part of the audience. Yeah. yeah. How do you as an actor sort of approach that to see when not be sort of skeptical of it or come across as a but are you 
I mean, I think the beauty of the entire team, of the actors, of the creators of Danny Cannon, is they've created this world. So even when you walk on set, this is our reality. This is, and we all love each other so much. So that, um, my, I do believe I'm all over the place. I forgive me, but it is, it is the the common person's view of what's going on, which is easy. When you walk into a room and you see, you know, this guy in this suit and another person in some crazy makeup and people with laser guns and stuff, it's my job. It might be the easiest one on the show because seriously, because I can come in honoring this character, but also all this stuff is amazing and fantastical and keeping this guy safe from all that crazy is it's the simplest job I think on the show. And I and I love my job. Like at first I was like, oh I would love to be the penguin or something. I mean no I like being the the audience's POV because yeah. if you don't have that everything's crazy so you don't know what's what sh you should see as crazy. Now you have a focus point. You're like okay if he thinks it's crazy this, this mess is crazy, you know? Well, I feel like you're just competitive of the audience, but also of the average Joe of Gotham. You never see that. You never see the average civilian, what, what, what the regular guy on the street thinks of all this stuff. Um, you know, all, all the, all the characters, most of the characters that you see are involved in the crazy and are normally the cause of the crazy. Um, and it's not so crazy to them. And so I, you know, it, it doesn't just give you um, uh, a peephole into into the crazy from the audience, but also yeah, it, gives the, it gives the audience a peephole into what um, any any average the Gothamites. Person, the Gothamites. Yeah. yeah. Good. Question. I love any of your interactions with Cameron. I think you guys have great chemistry on the screen. What can we see from um, Bruce and Selena's relationship moving forward for Cameron? Um, it's not looking good. So, no, uh, cloudy days ahead. <laughs> Bruce, and, Bruce and Selena. I, you know, they, they've gone through so many different um, things. What's the best way to put it in their relationship? They've gone through so many different steps, I guess. And they started out as an innocent young boy, an innocent young girl who found a connection because they were so different from one another and now they've matured now they're both nearing the goal um, and they don't really fit anymore especially because Bruce is now on this vigilante road and he needs to put that above everything else in his life and he makes sacrifices he has to and one of those sacrifices is his relationship with Selena as we saw in the last episode he has this knife and he knows it's important but Selena wants it. He wants to give it to her because he still has feelings for her, and they've, they've been through so much together. But he knows that what's more important is the safety of Gotham, and he wants to protect that above all. 